Good morning. Happy Sabbath. I, I lost my voice earlier in the week and I found it out in the gravel and it's back and so just uh, anyway but it's good to have you here and uh, we hope that you're blessed by being here today and uh, we'll start out with a few announcements and I'm not going to go into details there's a lot of things going on but next Sabbath there's a special breakfast at nine and we also will have communion and as you know uh, Sunday will be Easter so we're going to have a very special Sabbath next week here and uh, please join us for that. The parenting uh, with love and logic is coming up. Details are in the bulletin and the, the diabetes undone class also the details are in there so uh, good things are happening there for for health reasons and parenting and so we, we have those going on coming up and uh, uh, there's details there in the bulletin. Adventist Book Center's coming on the 17th, so get your order in and they're gonna be here in the parking lot of the church so you can pick up what you have ordered from them. And uh, so we also wanna point out a Palm Sunday concert with uh, Mark Newman and John Van Vote, yes. And as you know, they've been here before, and that's over at the, our Savior, the Lutheran's Church on 13th Avenue or Street in Clarkston. It's on the corner, right? No, no that's not the one on the corner. All right, 13th Street? Yeah, look for the church that has three flags up front. Okay, three flags out, okay. So there's streets and avenues, so you gotta look for the flags. So that, that's at 3 p.m. <clears throat> Also, if you want to get to Camp Myvedon, there's a, a spot where you can get on the computer and do that, and uh, a beautiful spot. We also have a special video that we want to show of that, because if you're on the edge, this will make sure that you really want to be at Camp Myvedon, so we'll watch that right now. Looks like you just sit around when you go to Camp Myvedon. 
but but they do have family camps and uh, people have told me that's the best vacation they've ever been on when they've gone to family camp so anyway hey it's uh, time for our offering and uh, as many of you know our conference is emphasizing serve one more and it's for upper columbia and advance today which involves evangelism and uh, serving one more is just an awesome uh, motto to live by and uh, the offering that will day will be picked up today will help further uh, people knowing about who Jesus is and how much he loves them so if the ushers would stand we'll pick up that offering dear Heavenly Father we are thankful to uh, have a camp that uh, is a form of a evangelism and uh, I know there's a lot of activities and things there, but ultimately it's about learning who you are and uh, what kind of God you really are. And as we pick up an offering today for conference advance, may uh, whatever that evangelism looks like, um, just teach one more person about how much you love them and uh, just be with this offering, be with the people that give. And uh, we ask this in your name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Happy, Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. To believe is to have trust, is to have hope, and is to have confidence. So today, we need to have hope in Jesus Christ, what he stands for. We need to trust him, that he knows what's best for us, and have confidence in the plan that he has for us, for our salvation. How many of us out there today are hurting? Some form or some fashion. Look around. We have people in need in our church. God tells us that we need to love ourselves and to love our neighbors. So let's reach out to each other. We're a family. I don't know about you guys, but I love each and every one of you. I miss you when you're not here. So reach out to your family. Reach out to those that aren't here. Reach out those, to those that are hurting today. But most of all, let's all <coughs> rejoice in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Are there any prayer requests this morning? I haven't had anybody come to me. I know there's a lot of things going on in our church, a lot of loss, a lot of pain, a lot of joy, a lot of blessings. So. Yeah, cancer in the end. <laughs> cancer, terrible thing. I don't know, there's a lot of people out there that are suffering from it. There's a lot of loved ones that we've lost from it. We just need prayers, constant prayers. <coughs> yes, for Terry and Jim. Okay. Linda, 
Her daughter just passed away, a friend of Dan's. Remember these people? Anyone else? Yeah. Chrissy? Larry? Larry's got stage four cancer. Again, cancer again. So, yes. Twice. Once wasn't enough. Had to do it twice. Oh my. Okay. A lot of unspoken requests, more than likely. So this morning, remember these requests in your prayers as we pray together and as I lead you out. Um, for those of you who can kneel, would you please kneel with me? Um, and let's bow before our Lord and Savior. Hallowed be thy name. Father, we come before you today to thank you every day, Lord, to worship you, to praise you, to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. For all the blessings, Father, that you've given us. There are so many that uh, I don't think we can count that. what we need and we're just asking father for your love and mercy to be multiplied today on those who are in need those who are suffering father there's cancer that is running rampant through this world uh, through our members here today and, and we just ask that you would help them lord that you would heal them that you would free them from their pain uh, we don't know what that looks like but you do we just ask for your mercies and your love upon them. And there are many who are hurting here today, Father. Um, we don't know what the reasons are, but you do. And we just ask that your spirit would guide us, lead us, and teach us today and come into our hearts. And help us, Lord, to see you and to hear you clearly as your word is given today. Father, and we ask that you would help us to raise our voices up in praise to you in song. And we just want to tell you how much we love you and that we can't wait for you to send your son back, Lord, to claim us all that one great and glorious day. Father, the, the prayers are endless for the people of this church. And I just ask, we ask, Lord, for you to guide our leaders, our pastors, and pour your Holy Spirit, Lord, out upon us, upon your church. Revive us, Father. Help us to reform. Awaken us from our sleep. And help us to go about this world doing your work, whether it's in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our towns, or the surrounding areas, Father. Help us to teach those about you and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray these things now, Father, that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I will say, if you're a little down today because of the gloomy sky, smile. You'll usually get a smile back. At the library a couple weeks ago when I was at the front desk, people have the choice of coming to the front desk to check out or to do their own self-service, and somebody said, I'm going to come to you because you were smiling at me. So. A smile goes a long way. I had my song service all planned, and then I read in scripture and ended up going a different direction. So I'm going to read Psalm 93 that led me to a different choice of songs. Our Lord, you are king. 
Majesty and power are your royal robes. You put the world in place, and it will never be moved. You have always ruled, and you are eternal. The ocean is roaring, Lord. The sea is pounding hard. Its mighty waves are majestic, but you are even more majestic, and you rule over all. Your decisions are firm, and your temple will always be beautiful and holy. Amen. So we're going to sing about the majesty of our Lord this morning and start with hymn number 83, O Worship the King. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. that hopefully soon um, when it comes to the end of our service we will be confident in our singing so we're going to sing be the love of Christ sounding better than a couple weeks ago so we'll we'll get it and we'll be singing that at the end of service again let's stand now for our opening song hymn number 88 i sing the mighty power of god and we'll sing all three verses
please be seated. All right, I know there's some kids, and this is your moment in time, and you got to seize it. Go get the pink and green baskets, and we'll collect some money for Beacon School, and then Tana's going to have you a story. Is that good English, Allison? That wasn't very good, was it? Tana will tell you a children's story. So wave those dollars high for the kids as they collect the money. Good morning. Okay, I don't know if there's a mic. Oh, it's right there. Thank you. All right. So earlier this morning, we were talking about camp. Did you see the picture up there? Well, they had, they had a camp where you go to. And so what we're going to do today is we are going to make a camp here, and I have some exciting things to show you. We're just going to, we can't bring the camp outside yet, so we're going to bring it to the church. Has anybody gone camping yet? Good. I'm so glad some of you have gone camping. That way you can talk to your friends about camping. I brought a sleeping bag and I was going to bring my tent, but we don't have too long. I want you all to come up here and get on my sleeping bag. We're going to tell a story. Just go ahead and make room for everybody. I didn't know how many kids. 
Just squeeze on there and make room. Maybe a couple of you could sit in the chairs up above. Okay, so when we go camping, most people will leave town and they do it on the weekend and out where I live, they go driving through my town all the time, headed out to camp. And you see them with their motorcycles and bikes and campers. And when you go camping, does your mom and dad say, we're going to go camping? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then what do you say? Yes. 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 Do you like it? Yes. 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 You know why camping is so good? Because when you're worried or you're mad, you should just think, I need to leave town. Because you know what? That's what your mom and dad are going camping for. <laughs> They're leaving town. Let's get out of here. OK. So today I have a surprise. So when you go out to the woods, have you ever seen a moose? Well. You've heard that the lions are king of the forest. But out in the forest, here, the king is the moose. Now, I want you to all make a line and come up here and look at this horn. I want you to touch it, because you know what? When they're on the moose, you can't walk up and touch them. If you do, you're going to get knocked down. Just take a look at it and feel how heavy it is. Now. When these moose are walking up in the mountains, they love to go into the lake. And you know what they eat? Does anybody know here what they eat? Leaves. They eat leaves, and they put their head under the water, and they pull up the moss, and they and they love moss. It's so slimy and good. That's what they eat. That's their favorite food. And they make a funny sound, but don't be afraid of them. Because you know why? Because God made us, and he made all the forest friends. And look at these. these. These are like counting how old this moose is. So they always, when they're first born, they have a spike. That's one is a spike. And then you count again. Anybody in the audience can call me wrong. But you start counting, and so this moose would be basically somewhere around five years old, four or five years old. Yes. Now, Dan's going to hold this up because this is going to be on this, on this side of the head. The eye, the eye of the horn goes in towards the head. Now, you may be thinking, thank you, Dan, quite heavy. You may be thinking that somebody went and killed this moose, but I found this. And when you're out camping, you can look around, you can find rocks, horns, and I found this, and I was so happy I found this because most of the time you don't get to find a moose horn. You find deer horns, but not too often do you find moose horns. Okay, is anybody afraid of moose? No. Okay, is anybody afraid to go camping? What do we do when we go camping? Does our mom and dad? Scary. What's that? To me, camping is scary. It is scary? In in camping. OK. Well, you're not camping to be scared, because you know what my granddaughter told me? She goes, Grandma, don't be afraid. And I thought, wow, OK. So you know what? And one thing when you're in camp, you always stay around your friends and your mom and dad, and that's to be safe. And then they'll take you out and let you see other things in the woods. Good. All right. Did you love this story? Good. Next time we're going to go back out again. All right. You can get your coloring things. Thank you.
Well, happy Sabbath to all of you. I'm very pleased today that this quartet can share a Palm Sunday number for you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we are also blessed to have two of our friends from the Methodist Church join us for this quartet. Uh, singing bass, we have Rick Towsley right here. And on second tenor, we have the one and only James Stutzman. And we hope you are blessed by this wonderful Palm Sunday song. have lined the narrow street to see this man from Galilee just a carpenter some say leading fools astray yet many kneel to give him praise and in his eyes they glimpse the power that sees the heart of all men, and he knows the Father's mind, he speaks the Father's words, for he comes in the name of the Lord. There is name of the Lord. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is hope in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the fallen through and when my strength is nearly gone when there's nothing left to do but just depend on you and the power of your name and when we call upon your name your strength through weakness to show we can know the master's plan extend the master's hand when we come in the name of the Lord there is strength in the name of the Lord there is power Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. His name will be worshipped forever. Creator, Redeemer, and King. There is strength name of the Lord. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is hope in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the
Good morning. That was beautiful, wasn't it? You know, I've got an opportunity to exercise faith one time crossing uh, the Zambezi River during flood stage. And I was out in western Zambia, and they had this pontoon ferry that you would drive. They would just run it into the sand on the bank, and you'd drive up on this thing, and they would put big trucks, cars, motorcycles, pedestrians. Well, I got in line, waited. The thing came back across the river, and we loaded up, and we're ready to head out. And um, they have two engines, one on each end of this thing. They're small diesel engines, Chinese single cylinder. They kunk, kunk, kunk. They make this real thumping noise. And they're running propellers, and they can turn these things and, and direct which way this ferry's going. Well, the river's moving quickly, and so they're you know, aiming upstream and then hoping to arrive at the other bank on where you're going, you know. And the Zambezi River is full of crocodiles. And um, I consider all water in Africa to be crocodile infested, but, but particularly the Zambezi River, they're thick with crocodiles. Some of them huge, like, you know, 15, 18, 20 feet long, big, lots of teeth. So anyways, I, climb, I get on this ferry and as we start to leave, normally the back end of the ferry, they raise it up the part you drive on, that little ramp, and it's out of the water. Well, as we depart from the bank, this thing is down in the water. The whole back of the ferry is submerged right behind my pickup. Like, the water's coming up within, you know, a couple, three feet of the back of my pickup. And I discover that there's a hole in one of the pontoons, and it's taking on water, and there's a trash pump. It's a Honda engine or whatever engine running a pump, and it's got a big discharge hose, and they've got this suction pump a pipe down in the pontoon. There's a hole right there by my truck. And as it fills up, this thing will catch prime and then start pumping water. And the water was discharging right at my truck. It was hitting the side of my truck. Um, and then it would, and so as we went out into the river, this cycle of discharging water, you know, and then it would pump it down and then wait a little bit and it'd come up and catch more water. So I, I was watching this and wondering, you know, are we gonna get to the other side? Because Swimming with crocodiles is, you know, not such a good deal. We did reach the other side, all right. As, as you can see, I didn't get eaten by the crocodiles. Joshua's story in the Bible, um, you know, he takes over leadership. As, as Moses died, he, he wasn't able to cross over. And uh, when he died, the Lord gave the control and the leadership of the, of the Israel people to Joshua, and he... God talked to him and said, told him to be courageous and be strong, very courageous, in fact. He knew he had a challenge ahead of him. They were going to go into the promised land and, and take land that wasn't, you know, currently being occupied by them. So Jesus, uh, Joshua tells the officers of the people to pass the message along and, and get their provisions ready. They're going to, you know, cross over uh, to the other side and um, take possession of the land that, that the Lord had promised them. So imagine, you know, they were packing their stuff. I don't know how much stuff they moved around with them, but they'd been in the wilderness for a long time, and there probably wasn't a lot of shopping opportunities out there, so their stuff was probably limited, you know. But uh, anyways, get their provisions ready. They were going to go. There was much fear in the land across the river. Uh, they'd heard about Israel and what God had done with his people, parting the Red Sea, you know, doing big things for them, taking, you know, water out of rocks, all this kind of stuff. So there was, they'd heard about this God of Israel and, and they had fear of what was going to happen. Now, Joshua sent some spies across the land, He's across the river. He sent two of them to go to Jericho. And uh, apparently you could see Jericho from the river because it, they said they crossed right across from Jericho where they, where they part of, you know, went across the river. And um, these spies entered into Jericho and... They went to a house, uh, a lady who had a house in the wall named Rahab, and they um, went into her home, and she told them how everybody was fearful of, of the God of Israel, and, uh, and they, she, I think, knew what was coming. You know, people anticipated this camp is across the river, and these people are coming our way. Um, and she was very interested in uh, her family being saved, and she asked them, hey, can you, you know, promise to protect us? Um, and she hid them up on the roof. The king had heard that they were, had come into the city, and he sent some people to her house to figure out where are these spies, and she told them they had come, but that they had left before the evening gates were closed in the evening, 
and that, the, that these people who were looking for these spies should go out of the city and they were going a certain direction, they should maybe find them down there. Meanwhile, she hid them up on the roof under some flax stalks and, uh, and then she ended up letting them out, out of her window with a cord down the wall to, to escape. And before they left, they did agree that they would protect anybody that was in her home, her family, parents, siblings, cousins, whatever, as long as they were in her home, when they came, uh, they, would be, if, they would be safe. And they, they should leave this cord, this uh, scarlet cord out the window to indicate what area of the wall was where they were. And, they, and she told them, hide up in the hill country for a few days and, uh, until they quit looking for you, you know, and then you can go back to your people. So they went up there and hid out for a bit. I imagine that was pretty frightening to uh, head out, be hiding where people are hunting you like that. I've not had that experience. Um, but Jericho's occupants were in fear of Israel, and they were trying to find these spies. They didn't know what they were going to, what kind of messages they were going to bring back to their people. So Joshua gives instructions uh, to, for the people to pr- make provision to cross the river, and he told the people in Joshua 3.5, It says, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. And God is about doing amazing things, right? He's partnered with these people. He's now telling them, get ready. Something big is about to happen. Now, why should the people follow Joshua's instructions? They've been following Moses, right? Now there's this new leader giving them instruction. And uh, and I think that they could sense and, and knew that God you know, was now conferring his leadership on, on Joshua and, uh, and, and they were willing to take his lead in, leading and in guidance. What are evidences of God's commitment to his people? Now, as I said earlier, he parted the Red Sea. That's a pretty big deal. They walked across when the Egyptian armies were pursuing them and they went across the, the, the sea and, and escaped that. God delivered manna six days a week. I mean, food, just coming on the ground every morning. They go out and collect their food for the day. Friday, they would take a double portion and have enough for the Sabbath. Um, that was evidence of God being with his people, right? Water from the rock when they were desperately thirsty. And Moses spoke to the rock and, and water came out. All evidence is that God was, was with his people. Joshua said in, in uh Chapter 3, verse 6, he said to the priest, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And it said they were supposed to stay a certain number of you know, feet distance. I think it's like 3,000 feet they were supposed to stay behind the, the Ark as they were following along behind the priests. And he gave instructions to the priests to enter into the river. Now the river is at flood stage. Now, the Zambezi River, it was at flood stage when I was crossing on that shaky ferry with, with holes in the pontoons. But these people are on foot, right? They, they don't even have the holy pontoons to get on top of. And they're supposed to cross the river. Now that, um, and these people weren't the ones that had crossed the Red Sea, right? A lot of those people had died in the wilderness. These are people who hadn't seen that. They'd heard the stories, but they hadn't experienced God parting water ahead of his people. The river's at flood stage. Imagine going down here to the Snake River or the Clearwater River barefooted and just, you know, it's at flood stage. Let's just all start walking across, right? I think we'd uh, think better of that idea. Are we committed? These guys are like, he said we're going. I guess uh, we better go. And the priests were told to stand in the middle of the river. So Joshua 3.15, it says, Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during the harvest season. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. Just imagine watching that happen, you know, just put your foot out, step it down, and it just starts piling up, It's right? It says it piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of Araba, the Salt Sea, it says, was completely cut off, so the people crossed over opposite of Jericho. Now the priests who carried um, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stirred firm on dry ground. I mean, this is a flood stage river. Imagine they shut the dam and no water's coming down the snake someplace. 
Does it become dry ground immediately? Not likely, right? There's probably some mud on the bottom of that river mixed with the rocks. Anyways, it says they're walking on dry ground. And to stand in the middle of the river while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. A flood stage river and God makes the, gri- dr- the ground dry for crossing. That's pretty amazing. Now where is God right now? In the middle of the river with him, right? He's standing there with the priests and, and his presence is with them when the Ark of the Covenant's right in the middle. They're standing there in the middle as everybody crosses the river. Now Joshua had told each tribe to select one man to select one uh, representative from the tribe. And as they crossed the river, they were to pick up a stone and put it on their shoulders and carry this stone across the river to the other side. Twelve stones. And then Joshua created a a memorial. He stacked these rocks the next day um, and made a memorial to the people so that they could remember. People could say, hey, what's that pile of stones there? And they could tell them, no, that's where God did that amazing thing, parted the river, and we walked across on dry ground. It's good to remember what God has done in our past, isn't it? Amen. Memorials like that to, to remember, to share the experience, and, and it builds our faith. It's, it's an it's a uplifting experience to think about what the amazing stuff God's done in our past and not forget about it. What uh, commitments have you made or are in the process of making now? Maybe relationships you're developing or relationships you're involved in now, maybe business commitments. Are they ones that God can stand in the middle of them with you? You know, the walls of Jericho, I love these little songs we learn as kids, and my wife sings them to our grandchildren and stuff. The Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, you know, and, and uh, Joshua's got some good stories in here. Um, so these guys, they cross the river, and they're on the other side, and they're near Jericho, and Joshua sees this being, this man, with a drawn sword, and it says that Joshua approached him. Now, you know, if you saw somebody with a sword drawn, you might think about looking at the other direction, how's my escape going to happen here? But no, Joshua moved forward to this man and, and asked him, are you a foe or are you a friend? Are you with us or are you against us? That's, that's a strong leader. And, and God had told him to be very courageous. You know, that takes courage to head to a guy that's got a sword drawn standing in front of you. And this, this being told him, no, he was the head of the army of God. I mean, it's the, he knew, and to take off his shoes, he knew he was, on, he was told he was on holy ground. And he was given um, directions on how they were going to take the city. And... Uh, they were to take seven priests with trumpets. They were going to take the ark, and they were going to follow go with the whole army, go out around the city, and they were going to play the trumpet, but the soldiers were not to make any noise. Let's just walk, but don't be talking. No joking, no shouting, nothing, no whistling, just, just walking. So one time around the city, day one. Day two, they did the same thing again. Onward, six days they were making that one trip around the city. Imagine if you were inside the city looking out over the wall, this army that you're afraid of, and they're doing weird stuff, right? Walking with this box, following along, playing the trumpets. That's not the normal kind of battle thing that they'd probably seen happen in their experience defending their city of Jericho. And on the seventh day, they were to circle the walls of the city for seven times. And the trumpets were to be playing all during those seven times, but when the trumpets gave a long blast, not just your normal one, but but a long blast, they were going to get a signal and all shout, and the walls would come down. And they did this, and God honored that direction, and the walls came down, and and they they just took the whole city. And, uh, but they protected Rahab and her family in the wall and didn't harm any of those occupants of her household and, uh, and honored their, their commitment to her. Now, at the time of, um, of Israel taking and occupying this land, there were times where Israel followed God and didn't follow God, honored his direction, 
took stuff and hid it under their tents, did things that were, you know, not always following God. And so there was this, you know, these tensions that were going on with people. But God's commitment to them was unchanging. He didn't decide, you know, I'm just giving up on these people. You know, they don't listen to me today. What, how, what's the chance of them listening to me tomorrow? But he pursued them and he nurtured them and ever trying to teach them. Lines that we cross in life, um, friendships, we, we decide to be friends with people, we, we pursue something, we're making a commitment. Uh, marriage relationships. Now I would suggest that in a, in a friendship you could decide that the friendship's not working and you can disengage from this relationship and, and, and um, move on. You know, sometimes friendships don't always work the way we hope they do. But in a marriage relationship, I would suggest that there's no reverse gear in the transmission. You know, you just, it's forward. You need to stay committed and you don't shift and reverse and back out of those uh, situations or those commitments. Now, crossing over the line to Jesus is one that we all are called to make, right, in life. In Joshua 24, 14, it says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in the, in the land who you're now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. This is Joshua. He was making a firm commitment. He wasn't going to back out. He wasn't, you know, backing out on that relationship. He'd, make, he'd cross the line. They'd come across the river, and he was staying with it. Now, what lines did Jesus cross for us? Leaving heaven, entering the world as a baby, that was a big deal. You know, I don't know what that was like because we haven't been there, but in, in thinking about it, it sound, seems like a pretty big deal. Let's read together if you want to turn your Bibles to, in Philippians 2, Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy completed, complete by being like-minded having the same love, being one in, a, in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value each other above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking, by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Have you crossed the line to Jesus and then forgotten about the commitment that you made? I mean, people, you know, sometimes they say, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm all with Jesus, and then life goes on and they get distracted by something and, and forget about that commitment. Have you backed out on an agreement or let a friendship down? I encourage you to uh, recommit yourselves to the lines that you have crossed. Maybe you've heard God's call on your life um, and not made the step to give him your life completely, even though you heard him talking to you and, and you know that he's beckoning for you. What is holding you back? Look around you at the wilderness you are now in. These Israelites left the wilderness and went into the promised land, right? It got better on the other side of the river. It, it was not, it was a land flowing with milk and honey as it's described. 
and they were coming out of a land where only manna was available in a desert. Psalms uh, 37.4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. Take the step now, cross over the line, let God do his work in your life and experience what joy and peace you will find living your life with Jesus in charge. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for your love and for the stories uh, in the Bible that, that where you were just fully engaged with your people, Lord, and uh, calling them to a relationship with you. We pray that you help us to honor our commitments to you, Lord, and if, if we haven't made that commitment, I pray that will be willing to do so today, following Jesus all the way. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for each person that's here. Bless our week as we go from this place. Help us to lift up your light and love to others around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sabbath.